Now let's open a new simulation file to run the flow field simulation. Parallel mode with eight parallel processes. First we open, we import the volume mesh. We create a geometry scene for the volume mesh. We do some visual inspection of the mesh. Especially we want to take a measurement of the inlet diameter. Roughly 5.06 millimeters. The next thing we want to do is to select uh, fluid dynamics models. We choose to use the steady flow, gas, and the segregated flow solver. For the gas, we want it to be a, a ideal gas. And uh, the flow is turbulent, so we choose the turbulent flow model. In terms of a turbulence model, we choose the renal stress turbulence model, under which we have to select other options. We choose linear pressure strain with two-layer wall treatment. Also, we include gravity. Since we included the gravity, we have to make sure that the gravity is in the right direction. Now by default, gravity is in the negative direction of uh, the z-axis. In our case, we want to change this to be the negative direction of the y-axis. Now we assign boundary conditions. The only thing we need to do is for the inlet and for the outlet. The inlet is a velocity inlet. and We need to specify the velocity. And I make it 8.127 meter per second. At this velocity, we will have approximately a volumetric flow rate of 10 liter per minute through the nozzle. The outlet is a flow split outlet, and we want to make sure that the split ratio is 1, since we have one inlet and one outlet in this control volume. Now let's set up the solver parameters. Several solvers are involved in this simulation. The parameters we need to change or adjust is mainly associated with the segregated energy on the relaxation factor. These, va these values are oftentimes too aggressive for complex flow field simulations. In this case, the flow field is very simple, so we leave all the under relaxation factors unchanged. In general, we also need to set up stopping criteria and also auto save. In this case, I'll leave the stopping criteria unchanged. We would also like to uh, create a derived part in order to visualize the simulation result. We will create a section, a plane section. And this plane section cuts through the control volume through the axis of uh, the nozzle. Okay, so we created a plane section. We're going to create a scene, a scalar scene. We will show the scalar, namely the velocity magnitude in the section that we just created. Make sure the parts includes only the plane section. For the scalar field, we select velocity magnitude.
And we also make sure that uh, the display is smooth filled. Now we can remove the other distracting displays, such as the outline. Position it so it's easily visible. Now we can start the flow field simulation. Click the Run button and the simulation will start automatically. This scene shows the residuals of the simulation. In general, the residuals will go down gradually as the simulation converges. We can also see the velocity distribution in this vertical section that uh, we created. Visualization of this flow field allows us to make a judgment whether the uh, simulation is going well. It will take about uh, 200 iterations for this simulation to converge. Now the simulation is complete. We should check see if the results are reasonable. There are various ways we can do this. For example, we can create a vector scene. In this vector scene, we can set it up so that uh, we show the velocity vectors in this vertical section that we created earlier. The flow field results appears to be what we expected. We can also do other things to check the result. For example, we can click on reports and create a new report. The mass flow through the inlet of the nozzle. We run report. The results of the report will, sh will be shown here. Then we can verify whether this mass flow rate is what it should be. With the flow field simulation done, we can now run the particle tracking. In order to do this, we have to introduce the Lagrangian multi-phase model. Lagrangian multi-phase model is here. We need to create a new Lagrangian phase. There are several models you can choose from. We need to check the material mo particles model. Our particles are going to be liquid, and they're going to have a constant density. We include the drag force. We also need to check the boundary conditions for the Lagrangian phase to be correct. By default, the condition, the boundary condition is rebound. Now this means when a particle reaches the surface, it will rebound. In most cases, we want to simulate a situa situation in which the particle sticks after reaching a surface. And that's corresponding to escape. It's called escape in this program. We change that to all escape. All right, now we need to create a injector. The injector is a part in this program that's used to uh, release particles into the control volume. We are going to make it into a surface injector. Okay, the surface injector will be based on a part or a surface within this control volume. And we need to choose that properly. Since the particles will be coming from the inlet or through the inlet, we let the inlet surface be the surface injector. And we check that uh, the physics, the Lagrangian phase that's associated with this surface injector is phase 1, which we just generated. Now we need to set up the injector. What we need to do is to assign the conditions under which we specify the flow rate. There are several ways we can do this. By default, the particle flow rate that's released from the injector is specified in terms of mass flow rate. 
So we can give it a arbitrary value. Let's call it one. One parcel streams. We we are going to use one. Particle diameter, that's the diameter of a particle that we want to track. Let's say we want to track uh, one micrometer particles. The particle velocity, we can make it zero because uh, these particles have very short relaxation time. Now we are almost ready to run the particle tracking. Before we do that, let's do something to the solvers. Now since we have completed the flow field simulation, we no longer need the solvers that are solely associated with the flow field simulation to continue to run. In other words, we can turn them off. We turn off all the solvers except the Lagrangian multi-phase solver. Okay, now we can run the particle tracking. Just click this button and we only need to run it for one step. This may take some time, depending on the size of the injector. Now it's very quick. It's probably because the number of uh, particles released from the injector is very small. Now we can see here the number of points within this particle injector is 557, which means there are 557 locations from which a particle is released into this flow field and be tracked. In order to get the impactor efficiency for this particular particle size, we need to get some information from the reports function. Create a new report using the area average function so we are going to get the flow rate of particles through the outlet because we know the mass flow rate of particles into the inlet. And if we can get the outlet the particle flow rate, then we can get the efficiency. To get the flow rate through the outlet, what we do is we get the, the incident mass flux of particles first onto that uh, out, outlet surface. And we need to sub specify the parts, the part and this should be the outlet. So what we're getting here is the area averaged incident mass flux of the particle onto this outlet surface, this circular cylindrical surface. Now let's run this report. Now with the mass flux of particles through the outlet surface, we can now calculate the impactor efficiency for this particle size. Okay we can calculate the particle flow rate through the outlet and then compare that with the particle flow rate into the inlet, the ratio of which will be equal to the efficiency of the particle penetration. So this 0.97 is the penetration of one micrometer particles through this impactor under this flow rate conditions, which is 10 liter per minute. And this appears to be right 